You know, uh, uh, <laughs> re remember those days, huh? Remember those days. You don't remember those days, huh? Running around in the trees. You don't remember those times, huh? Jumping from branch to branch and, you know. You, you don't remember? <laughs> Jesus, pitiful. Pitiful. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know, uh, energy, energy is uh, it's so misunderstood. Uh, and and people uh, people grow up thinking about energy is fast cars, energy is uh, the electricity, uh, power is strength or power of mind. Uh, uh, energy is. Uh, Spirit, uh, uh, for some energy is holy, and for some energy it's just being able to go to work, come home, cook, and go to bed. Just enough energy just for that. It is up to you to, to really define what energy is and the various placements of energy and what it does. Because most people have abused the word energy, and most people have become very ignorant. They're very ignorant about what energy is and what it's doing. And actually, uh, from a bi biological point of view, if you understand uh, when, how a person eats and how the, your stomach and how your whole system starts to break down the various uh, food particles, and so it produces the, the sugars, and, and so it helps the protein to help give us energy for our body so we can last another minute, another hour, another week, another month. Huh? So we can go on and on and on and on. And we know that various foods actually give us different kinds of energy. Huh? Uh, Swiss chocolate mm. <laughs> does something. Everybody knows. It, it's, it's hard to describe and sometimes we can describe it, but it's Hmm. <coughs> hmm. Hmm. A silent language that is well understood throughout the world these days with Swiss chocolate. German chocolate also. Hmm. Hmm. American chocolate. <laughs> okay. So. And then people have found out that if you do certain things, if you like uh, get a massage, if you go swimming, if you meditate, or if you contemplate, or you go for a nice walk, or if you have good thoughts, uh, you have good feelings, or you know you have a good hug, or you know a good kiss. Somehow people, you know, think you know you, you can start to have good feelings, good energy from from all this, you know. And some people have this uh, misperception. Uh, Give me a hug so I can get some of your energy. You know, can some of this, and uh, there uh, does happen to some degree. It does activate it to some degree. But to give somebody energy, what is it that you're giving? Is it a glance in the eye? Huh? Is it the feeling on your hand? Are there are some waves that you're not seeing, you know, like radioactive waves emanating from your, from your eyes or from your brain or from your feet or from your heart or from your mind emanating and, and penetrating this, this shield called a skin and, and then giving them, uh, let's say, uh, spiritual carbohydrates, uh, spiritual potatoes. Uh, spiritual Swiss chocolate uh, uh, from, your, from your good feelings. Uh.
people have never really paid attention to what is really taking place, what is really transforming and with all these energies. Well, you know, uh, actually, uh, people, they kind of run around like, uh, like other people are filling stations to get uh, energy from petrol, you know. Some people treat people like that, like they're filling stations, you know. I get good energy from you. I don't like your petrol. I like your petrol. You know, I don't like to be around you, but I like to be around you. And, uh, and so people have these conceptions of petrol stations, people, to, to get something. And some people live off this. And there are people that can absorb other people's goodness, too. That is true. They have known that uh, nurses that have a darkness about them, that somehow a lot of people die on their shifts. They can die on their shifts. As it is for doctors, too. That if they have something a little cynical about them, a, li a little sinister about them, a little twisted about them, somehow uh, people can die, and they have seen this with nurses and doctors. And as it is with a person that is... Uh, like a child. A child can also do this to a parent uh, if they're sick. And sometimes we can feel being around someone how uh, somehow you feel drained with someone. Very drained. Especially when you're around someone that is um, clinically depressed. You know, it's, it's a very obvious feeling from that. But most of us we, we, you could say, live somewhat typical lives, and, and we dodge in and out of buildings, and we, we get to meet people in the street, and we shake lots of hands, and sometimes give lots of kisses, and, you know, and we rub shoulders on, on the street corner and on the sidewalks, and, you know, and we have a little snack and, and a little <laughs> sandwich or some soup and everything. And so we're, there's this big exchange taking place. Always, a tremendous amount of exchange, morning, noon, and night taking place. And then one, one has to wonder, you know, because so many people, they, they, they get down, they, their energies go down, so to speak, they get tired easily, and they, they wonder, what is wrong here? The most important thing, that if you find yourself with a lot of low energy and and uh, maybe it's not biological, maybe it's psychological. That happens a lot for lots of people. And for other people, it's biological. There's something going on that's not quite working right, or it's breaking down the, the system to, to give you energy. So, you know, there's some blockages going on. So it's up to you to determine whether it is a medical situation or a psychological situation. But for the most part, we can't. Some people can always be sick. And a lot of people don't like to be sick. And for the people that don't like to be sick, and, and they like uh, to have enough energy to go out and, and do their life and, and have a lot more. You know, it's kind of like getting your second wind when you need it. And what is it? You know, what is this second wind? You thought you were tired. You thought you were down. You thought, you know, and all of a sudden the second wind comes up. Well, what you thought was wrong if that happened. It was just, you were just dead wrong. But you thought. But you thought. And this is very much like what you see in the fire dance. You see me also, and, and you have also have experienced it with yourself, where you can get your second wind. Your second wind. There's something to this. And that's what this is what I'm relating to here. That's what this is all for. Uh, you have to be very careful about your own philosophy, about your own thinking about yourself. Because you're coming from your perspective. You're coming from your hurt. You're coming from your picture, you, the way you have drawn, painted your perception of yourself and your energies. Huh? Know what you know and know it well, and know what you don't know and know it very well. So let's think about this. 
Have you noticed that uh, young ones and certain people in their middle age, in their 50s and their 70s and 80s, certain people, they can just go and go and go and go. And they can just go and go and go and go. Hmm? You know? What's your secret? Is it a, a shot of tequila every day? Huh? Huh? What is it? Is it saying the mantra? Huh? What is it? Is it just having attitude, good attitude? What is it? What is all this? And where does all this come from? Because you, you could say so much of it is your philosophy. So much of it is determined by your philosophy of yourself and of this world, of your own body and your own mind and of your heart. The psychological mind can easily start to twist. And I see this all the time. You know, it, it, you can see it um, with people who they, uh, they see themselves as um, uh, everyone else should work but them. And uh, everyone should do the things for me, but I shouldn't do it for myself. <laughs> and you could see that they can easily twist things around so they're not there. They don't have to do it. Or they're tired. Or this came up. Or that came up. Or, the, you know, the rational mind has kicked in. And because we can be very clever with this rational mind, we can rationalize ourselves like, oh, God, I'm so tired now. You know, like, oh, you know, I, I, I can't do this anymore. Oh, I, I don't feel like, you know, I, there's something telling me not to. My intuition is telling me I, I, I can't do this. I'll do it later. Or I, I don't have the, the energy to do it. And this rational mind is profound. And we can talk ourselves into anything, anything. And it's very much like work. It was the, here's something to really think about. The American attitude of work is so different than the European attitude of work. It is so different. It's shocking. It's so shocking. This is where the American attitude is better than the Europeans. Much, much better. That uh, as when people are, when we're all very young there in America, we have a, a, a much healthier perspective and attitude about work. We're not laden down with a lot of history. Superiors, or you're taking advantage of me, or you're trying to tell me what to do, or, you know, or, you know. And with Americans, hey, you know, and especially when it comes to being an entrepreneur, especially when it comes to having your own business and, and, and having the encouragement to get out there and, and work 16, 17 hours a day. Hey, huh? Because it's, it's a good dream. You know, it's a good hope. It's okay that you put in these extra hours, that you work extra. It's all right. And whereas the European, it's laden down with a lot of history. And actually, you think it's your attitude? It's not. It's your parents' attitude. It's their neighbor's attitude. It's their parents' attitude. It's their parents' attitude. It's their parents' attitude. You're just, you're, all you're doing is, is fall, doing the repetition. You're just repeating. And you think it's yours, and it's not. Look at America. It's very different when it comes to work. It's, hey, let's go do it. Hey, let's go do it. Hey, it's all right. And, and Americans do, can do it much, much lighter with it. Totally different world. And it's just a matter of upbringing, boundaries, countries. As you know, you can go anywhere in the world and the, diff and the, the attitudes, how different they are about everything <coughs> in life. And this, if you look at it as a whole, it, it speaks an awful lot about how we deal 
with our time. 